Jake Paul loses for the first time. And you know what that means. Rematch clause, baby. It was all planned out. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, that was a, it was a boxing match for sure. And I can never get over all the clinching. Like there was more headbutts, back of the head punches, and clinching than clean shots getting landed in the fight. And the referee just wanted to be involved the whole time. What about that point deduction? What was all that about against Jake Paul and then against Tommy after? I don't know what that ref was doing. When he took the point away from Jake Paul because he thought he was hitting him in the back of the head, there was no punch that hit him in the back of the head. Those punches are on the side. And he only threw like two of them and they had nothing on it. And then he took a point away from Tommy Fury for holding onto the arms. Like, let the guys fight, man. I understand you gotta break them up from the clinch, but you have to give them a speech every time you do it. I swear it felt like half the fight was the ref scolding them. Yeah, for sure, don't be clinching up that often, but that's just boxing, man. You're always gonna see clinches. You're always gonna see guys just hugging each other. And in the middle of the fight, they interview Logan Paul for everybody to hear, even for the fighters to hear. They were surprised that Logan started to cuss out Tommy trying to get into his head. Of course he is. That's why you don't do that in the middle of a fight. But overall, Tommy looked pretty decent. It seemed like a pretty comfortable win for him. He technically got dropped, you know, he got hit by a jab, but you could see that his foot slipped out and he fell down. I think if he had good traction with his shoes, he would be able to keep himself from falling, but it was technically a knockdown, and we definitely know that Jake is going to be boasting about that, you know, he dropped Tommy and all that stuff, but Tommy Fury definitely showed to be the superior boxer when it comes to his technique, he was able to land really good jabs, right crosses through the guard and stuff like that, and Jake Paul showed to have a really good chin, he took all the punches, shelling up against them and not really returning back too often, and we definitely saw a situation where Jake was not able to use his power that much to his advantage compared to what he was able to do against his previous opponents and it's because he's actually fighting a professional boxer who's under 38 years old and a guy like that is going to also be able to take jake's punches much better than an older veteran who's been knocked out and is worn and torn but jake was getting really close to those overhands he was trying to line up that right overhand over tommy's jab but the speed was a bit of a difference there and jake's precision was completely off he wasn't even like looking where he was punching his eyes were to the ground and he just swinging that overhand hoping it lands where you definitely have to keep your eyes on the target the whole time right tommy is not slow he's going to see that punch come he's not another older fighter i mean look at jake's eyes man straight to the ground and that's why tommy was able to get away from a lot of these overhands but jake was doing a good job of slipping the jab he would try to line up the overhand off of that or even some of his darting jabs he would have a really low stance even though he's the taller fighter he had a low stance and then charging into him with a jab which generates a lot of power and you could definitely see that jake was definitely trying to get that knockout but Jake's biggest punches besides the jab in the 8th round were those left hooks. He was slipping or parrying the jab and then countering with his own left hook and Tommy keeps his hands way too low. He enters in that distance and if his punch is going to get deflected, he's going to be in the range of his opponent's counter. And that is something actually Jake did pretty well, better than everything else he was doing in the fight. Or even connecting in with a right hand just to enter into the correct distance in case Tommy tries to get away so he can chase him down, hunt him with the left hook. And again, you see Tommy's hand just all the way down at his waist. He definitely needs to work on that because the further up the totem pole he goes, the more he's going to pay for this. But yeah, it wasn't the most technical fight. It wasn't like a high-skilled boxing match. But to see it unfold the way it did was a spectacle to watch. And seeing an undefeated fighter like Jake Paul, who a lot of people have been waiting for him to lose, finally lose that fight. It's always going to draw attention, draw people to the fight. So, congratulations to Tommy Fury. He beat his toughest opponent in his career, and now he's gonna have to get ready for that rematch. And I really wonder what would happen if Jake loses the rematch. Like, does this all kind of go away? Does this whole spectacle of Jake Paul end? And is Tommy Fury ready to go up against the better cruiserweights of the world? Because even though he beat Jake Paul, Jake is not necessarily like a top boxer. There's a big difference with actual real cruiserweight boxers than going up against Jake Paul. And so far, man, Tommy just hasn't fought that level of competition yet. He looks talented, he looks fast, he looks athletic, full of confidence, but I'm really wondering, is he going to be able to get to the top? But leave in the comments below, what do you guys think? What did you guys think of the fight? Did you at least enjoy it somewhat? Make sure to give the video a like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, and this fight definitely showed that MMA is the superior sport.